Porsche Boxster. With brilliant handling and a sweet flat six engine mounted behind the driver, the Boxster is a regular on our 10 best list. It offers much of the 911S goodness and interior yet possesses its own distinctive character. There are three engine choices, a 265 HP, 2.7 liter, a 315 HP, 3.4 liter S, and a 330 HP, 3.4 liter GTS. For the ultimate Boxster, check out the Spider with its 375 HP. The Boxster is an enthusiast's dream. Now just how much nerve on a can your checkbook allow? Ever since the Boxster launched 19 years ago, WAGs have derided Porsche for not fitting the mid-engined cart with a 911-grade power plant, suggesting that the company is afraid to one up the centerpiece of its lineup. Even Zhu Finhausen's most starry-eyed apologists have lamented the decision time and again. And it's worth noting that while the House of Fairy trots out the 550 Spider to tout the Boxster Flash Cayman S Heritage, the James Dean Death Wagon and its successors 718 are escape, Hars 60, W Hars, Yet all were high-performance racing machines, while the rear-engine 356 stood as the car for the sporting masses. In contrast, the Boxster has spent its career relegated to the same ignominious fate as the 914. Sure, you could buy a 914 with a six-cylinder in the early 70s. But it was the 1969 model year's bottom feeding 911T engine, while the T itself received the power bump. With the Boxster Spider, Porsche promises immense, having finally stuffed behind the seats the 3.8 liter flat 6 from the 911 Carrera S. Still stunned. Yet the engine is still not as powerful as it is in the 911. Porsche blames the shorter intake manifold required to make the motor fit in a mid-engine application for cutting output from 400 to 375 horsepower. As an engineer said to us in a seeming attempt to absolve Bicycle of any responsibility for the power cut, it detunes itself. Compared with the Cayman GD4, which shares its engine with the Spider, the Boxster is not quite as track-oriented. Whereas the GD4 receives the 911 GD3S front suspension minus the center lock hubs, the Spider, essentially, is a Boxster GTS with extra displacement, foofy bodywork, and nylon strap interior door pulls. The GD4, as its Porsche's weight with its mid engine hardtops, is rated 10 horsepower higher than the big bore Boxster. The message. The GD4 is the racier one. The last iteration of the Boxster Spider featured a fussy, skeletal flavor that of the roof. The new car's top is simpler, although it still retains a measure of fiddliness, mainly having to do with the maddening hidden buttons that release the canvas buttresses from their mirrorings. It also features a power latch operated by a console-mounted button, which somehow serves to undermine the otherwise manual unit's purity. We can't help thinking that Porsche would have done better to aid the honest, 
magical simplicity of the Mazaniata's roof. When stoked, the top is hidden by a large, B-flared aluminum tonneau. The revised rear visually thickens the spider and makes the car's appearance exceptionally color-dependent. In racing yellow, the effect works. In silver, the spider resembles a stuffy, slab-sided ingot. In guards red, the vibe gets a little regrettable as in ACH. Fancy J. Virgin took his Boxster to the E. Pettigan. Because the spider trades the GD4S sizable wing for a stunned ducktail, the front splitter has been shortened slightly to maintain an equitable distribution of downforce. Uppy cake gestalt. The tight Italian roads where we flogged the car make one aware of the sheer size of the modern Boxster. Its stout exhaust note, with programmed in overrun violence, merely adds to the beefcake gestalt. This spider is no light and light arachnid, it's more godly hammer than asphalt scalpel. It does, however, remain wholly unperturbed by pavement imperfections, and the newfound power does nothing to make it twitchier. While the base 2.7-liter Boxster is a momentum-oriented machine that demands attention and revs to stay on the pace, the Spider conspires to steamroll all manner of speed-killing sense with a liberal application of the right foot. On a tight road, leave the slip-shifting six-speed gearbox in second and drive it like the Tesla. If more than engine braking is required, the middle pedal offers confidence-inspiring, repeatable stopping power. Carbon ceramics are an option for the S feet who simply must have the yellow calipers. In some ways, the spider feels like a Johnny-come-lately answer to Ferrari's 355, the contemporary of the original Boxster. It's a ripped, rip-roaring muscle machine with an oral fury to match its unerring point and square dynamics. As if to underscore this Porky's prescribed dry route took us through Medinese countryside. Tuffing Swabian grind, black, and pop at the ancient stone walls and reveling in the echoes felt like sacrilege of the finest order. And with such a tall second gear, there was plenty of Teutonic oral bomb bags to send ricocheting through towns and into the hills as we wound the spider up close to its 7,800 rpm breadline. The traction and stability nannies allow a sensible modicum of loose booty playfulness while keeping the car fundamentally oriented toward the next apex. The versatile predictable bruiser of a thing. This Porsche is come up on a hydrocarbon belching autobi and keep caroming through the curves, find a spot wide enough to pass, depress the accelerator with a modicum of prejudice, and its bereaved air chi hair hut. Colin Chapman acolytes may brand us heretics but in a car as thoroughly modern as the 981 generation Boxster, the 24 pound weight savings engendered by the Spider's overly complex top doesn't seem worth the effort it took to engineer, especially when the standard powered unit is such a joy to use and results in the prettier package. Instead, the treatment merely adds needless complication and affect to a fundamentally excellent vehicle. Driving the Spider, 
we realized what we'd very much like is a Boxster GDS 3.8. Before the naturally aspirated flat 6 goes the way of the lesser building, might you please build us one of those? Porsche.